Today's guest on the HD Connection is from the beautiful Caribbean islands. He also helped put Carousel on the map through the game of baseball. Now he played 17 seasons in the major leagues, a 10-time Gold Glove Award winner, five-time MLB All-Star. Welcome to the show, Andrew Jones. What's good, baby? Yeah, what's going on, guys? Thank you. Thank you for having me, buddy. Nah, no problem at all. I'm glad you could be on. And, and Andrew, I, I want to begin by talking about uh, where your journey actually started and your youth days. Now, you're from Carousel, which is located in the Caribbean islands. But growing up, how much attention did Carousel get from Major League Baseball? Well, I mean, uh, first baseball in Carousel is huge, by the way. Um, you know, my dad played, um, you know, other, you know, other dads played the game before. Baseball was very big down there. Um, we compete a lot in the uh, Pan American against Cuba, Dominican, all those good teams um, in the Caribbean. So baseball was very knowledge down there. Um, you know, just it's just one of those things that um, you know we don't we don't we didn't have that cable to watch all the games in America, but we watch a lot of baseball that was broadcast as winter ball league that that was playing in Venezuela that we would get in local local TV from Venezuela. And that's how we got to know more about the baseball as my my point of view. But um, people before me probably watch it from, you know, go and play in the selection team and go out to to the Caribbean series and play baseball down there. But, um, you know, since I've been watching it on TV, um, you know, I always want to tell, you know, I was telling my mom always, I want to play baseball on TV. I never told him that I want to be a professional baseball player, but, I told him I just I want to I want I want to play baseball on TV and um, you know just that's how everything started. But you know, playing baseball through through a, a young age, all you want to do is just go out there and have fun with your friends and and play the game and and, and try to win. And um, I never was on a good team when I was growing up. We always was losing. <laughs> um, I would go to my mom and you know I never wanted my parents to come watch me watch the games. So they never came really. To be honest with you through my youth career. Um, I would be back home and I'd be like, my mom would be like, you, you dirty, you, 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 y'all, y'all must, you must win. I say, yes, we won. And then she opened the newspaper and said, we lost. So I was like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, go, <laughs> going through that, that's, that's how, you know, that's how baseball was down there. You know, you always want to win. And, um, you know, if you're not on the right team and, you know, you don't have, you know, good, um, competitive team, um, you're not going to win, but, um, playing baseball down there, that was the thing that I wanted to do. I always wanted to play baseball and, um, you know, when the opportunity came up to to sign as a professional baseball player, um, you know, it was a big discussion with my family and I took advantage of it. So growing up in Carousel, who actually taught you how to play the game of baseball and introduced you to the game of baseball as well? Well, like I said, my dad was a big part of him. He always challenged me on it. And uh, we always used to play, um, you know, in the in the yard. Um, he challenged me in anything, jumping, running or whatever it is, swimming. Um, he always challenged me in, 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 in every sport of, of that we can challenge our, 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 each other with. Um, but after that, you know, I think around five years old, he was like, you ready to go to a team? So he took me to a team and, uh, you know, when he dropped me off, I started crying like a little kid because I, I was not used to go and play with other kids. So, um, <laughs> you know, that was a different, that different thing. But um, after that, he couldn't get me off the field because that's all I wanted to do. And, um, you know, and, you know, he, he's one of my idols. Um, he, he always pushed me um, to, to my limit. He always had positive things to tell me about, about the game and um, what to continue to learn because this game, you're not going to never not learn every day when you get on the field, it's a challenge to learn something um, new and, and, the valuable skills that you have to, to get better. So, um, um, you know, just, I'm still continuing to learn, even I'm still working with the Braves, but, um, um, he was a big, big part of my, my, um, youth baseball. And, you know, I had great coaches down there that, that took their time to, to work with us and come pick us up, take us to the baseball game and stuff like that. And, you know, I appreciate all of them, but I think, I think my dad was the, the biggest one that, that pushed me, um, the most as, you know, what, what do I want to do in my future? Now I can, I can relate to you because my dad coached me in just about every sport growing up. Now we had about 95% great times. And then we had those 5%, you know what I mean? Bad times where it was a time where I may, I may have struck out, which wasn't often, which, which wasn't often, but 
I got to go ride in the car with my mom because my dad's not trying to hear it in his car. <laughs> did y'all, did y'all well, ever have any of those moments well, where y'all? Well, well I, I, I remember one one time. I mean, my dad was easygoing. I think my dad was just almost like me. I just really lay, lay back, just have fun and, and enjoy life, to be honest with yeah. you. Um, but I just remember one time that I just came back from uh, Puerto Rico playing a selected team for the for, for Curacao. And, um, and that was the year that was my last year of that that um 13 youth so i was going to 14 and 14 15 16 youth and uh, he was coaching that team and i um and i you know i'll go up then and you know we'll be part of the team because they were going into the championship and you know i wasn't playing so i was like i took my shoes off and he got in the he got in the in the dugout and said put your shoes on i want to see you do that so I'm like crying because he embarrassed me in front of everybody. <laughs> uh, then, he, then he put me in the game and, you know, I went in there and I had an opportunity to play and, and I, I had two home runs and I, I think it was a scout watching somebody there um, mm. and I caught their eyes. And um, since then, everything was just, you know, right here now and just playing, playing professional. Now, you travel to play baseball a lot of different places. You had the opportunity to travel to Japan when you was 11 years old. What was that experience like being so young? Well, I'll be honest with you, that's all we wanted to do on the island. We live on a small island. I mean, all we see is beach <laughs> and, 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 and cactus and, and, and playing baseball with, with ourselves down there. And um, I think everybody, and you know, as my age, all we want to do is, you know, travel around the world, get a chance. Mm -hmm. and, and I think baseball was one of those things that we couldn't do with. And um, that's why we, we, you know, we play it and, and um, we took our time to, to be good in it. And every time we get a chance to get a selected team, it's an honor. And it's, it's a big honor to go represent your, your, your country or your island on, on, mm -hmm. on, on a higher stage as, you know, we went to Puerto Rico, we went to, to Panama, we went to, Puerto, uh, to Japan. I think, you know, like I say, we went to Japan and played the uh, Little League World, World Series, not the World Series as they play here in in the United States, but it's the war world. And, um, you know, we got a chance to play against so many great players. And, you know, I, I even look back in the day and, you know, even guys that I, I, I played that got signed as a professional. And then when we talk about it, you know, like mm -hmm. a couple of guys from Venezuela, a couple of guys from Panama that was there that same time that I was there, like, you know, a uh, former pitcher that pitched with uh, Montreal Expo, Uget Urbina, he was on the team mm -hmm. um, with... Okay. Um, with um, Venezuela at that time. So um, it was just a lot of baseball going on. So, I mean, get a chance to go to Japan. It was just awesome. I mean, you know, the, 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 the culture there is such a great culture. Um, you know, the people are very kind, very respectable, and they took us as, as one of their own. Now, at what point in your life did you, did you know, okay, I'm special and I have these gifted talents and I can take this to the next level? At what age was that for you? Well, I think I think I started feeling that very com confident around 14 years old. Okay, you shrug your shoulders a little bit, like okay, I knew I was the man at 14, baby. No, I mean, I, I, <laughs> no, no I, I, I felt I felt like I was separating myself from a lot of kids around that time. I mean, we all play, we all do the same thing, we all um, struggle, we strike out, we do all this thing that's a yeah. part of the game. But I think around 14. Um, the consistency start coming more. And um, that's why, um, you know, the, the, the scouts start coming, you know, coming to contact with, with my, my dad and myself. And, um, you know, we took a decision around 15 and a half years old and I uh, decided to come to the States and, and, and proceed my, my, uh, my career as a professional baseball player. Now I want to stay with the island that you're from, Carousel. And I want to tie it to your foundation, the Andrew Jones Foundation. You're actually in the process of building a stadium in Carousel through your foundation. Tell me about that and, and, and why is that one of the things that you wanted to do? Well, since, since um, two, early 2000, I wanted to do that. Um, you know, I wanted to just get back to the island. I mean, I know how, much, how many kids idolize me as what I was doing in the United States and you can see now how many kids is from Curacao is in Major League Baseball right now. Um, follow their, their 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 career that they want to do, and they probably idolized me and saw what all that I, I did through my career, and they say I want to do that because he's from he's from the same island that I am. 
So um, I'm sure they all had had some kind of touch of what they want to do and then and do the same thing that I did. So I wanted to get back on the back to the island and and continue to to help those kids follow their dreams, not just just baseball, but um, education too. So um, you know now that um, you know we can fall into the draft as coming here and 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 you know probably go to school, get an education, and because you know after baseball, if you don't, you know some of them just only play five years major league baseball. I think that's the average of of playing major league. But if you don't get a chance to play over ten years, um, you know right. you cannot be that successful. You got to have an education to to follow up after that. So. Um, you can continue to be the great, the great person that you are in the community and, and, and for your family. That's great stuff. I'm glad you're doing that. Whenever you can give back and, and, and give kids an opportunity to, to thrive, not just in sports, but like you mentioned, educational wise, I think that's very important. Now, 1993, 16 years old, you're a teenager, dude. You're a teenager. <laughs> and you signed with the Braves organization, man. You spent three years in their system. And in your last season, you were named minor league player of the year. Did you have a sense that you were going to get your shot to the majors at that point? Um, when I first got, got to the States and, um, you know, we, as every kid, you, you're excited to come and, and play the baseball. It's something that you want to do your, you know, your whole career. Um, you do dream about it. Um, but when I got to West Palm Beach, I saw so many kids that was there and I was like, whoa, this is different now. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of kids trying to get the same position that you want, same That's thing right. that you want. Um, so, um, you know, the word active came in, in place. Um, the dedication, the, the, the respect, um, the humbleness, everything came in fact that you had to separate from it. I mean, I played with so many great baseball players through my whole minor league career that I thought was like, great players and some of them never never made it because um you know bumping the road here and there or or not not be respectable or not be humble enough or not be working active hard to to mm. to get to that part so um you know get in there and see all those kids and 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 see kids that was older than you um that just want to do you know, same thing that you want to do, get to the major league baseball and, 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 and be that, that player that they wanted to be. Um, so it was tough, to be honest with you. Um, mm. But after, after the first year, um, you know, my first rookie, look, rookie year, I struggled a little bit, to be honest with you. Um, you know, we, you know, we playing at 12 o'clock um, afternoon backfield in West Palm Beach. The sun is burning up. It's nobody. It, it's nobody watching you play baseball. Um, you know, it's probably maybe one or two family or, or one girlfriend of one of the players watching the game. So it's it, it, it was tough to to focus and 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 um and get on on the right track. But um after that year, after the same year, I move half season. I move up to to play at night and 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 Danville, Danville, Virginia. And I think after that everything kind of got on a track and, and uh, I found myself on a, on a, on a consistent basis on the level of playing here in the United States. Now you're finally in the majors um, at this point It's the year of 1996. You also make the postseason roster, right? Now mm -hmm. that year y'all made the world, world series versus the Yankees and mm -hmm. game one, you have two home runs become the youngest player to, to, to hit a home run in the World Series. And you actually broke Mid Mickey Mantle's um, record that he set. And I think if, I'm not, if, if I read this correctly, it was actually on his birthday that he would have been a certain age if he was still living. Um, yeah. Take me back through that moment and, and, and why that moment was so vital for you and your career. Well, to um, be honest with you, in 1996, I was in, in A-ball, Durham, um, North Carolina trying to win a championship over there. Mm. Um, you know, we had a great team. Um, we, we clinched the first half on the first, in the first place. And so that, that put us a chance to make the play playoff right away. So um, I was just there trying to, trying to win a championship there. And um, all of a sudden, and, you know, I got on, the, on a good, great groove and, you know, I got called up to double A. Um, the first 12 games in double A, I struggled really bad in this, 
this the manager called me to this uh room he go hey andrew come see me um to my room uh -oh, after the game uh oh you going so to the principal's thought, office I, you're in the principal's I, I, office now <laughs> I, I i thought they're gonna tell me hey go back to a ball and and and, <laughs> and um you know start getting back you know start feeling yourself back um he pulled me in and say hey andrew i know you want to show everybody that you belong here and i know by showing people that you belong here you got a hit and everybody know that but um you know they're really not pitching to you. Just take your walk. And I was like, you know, I, I, I sit back and I'm like, you know, when you come from the island, we don't we don't walk from the island. We, we swing out of the island. <laughs> so um, so I was like, OK, you know, I took it. I went back and, you know, next day I got a couple walks and, you know, it started getting on base. And then I got on a streak. I, I went to like what 20 game hitting streak um, mm -hmm. in the road. And, you know, when I broke my streak, um, the Miami coordinator was there and he, he, he told me, say, hey, are you ready to go to AAA? I was like, <laughs> okay, um, all right, fine. So I get, I get called out to AAA. When I get to AAA, you know, I'm swinging the bat very well. I'm, you know, I'm on a good streak. Um, you know, the night before I get called up, the manager called me. He said, Andrew, we're going to put you in right field today. And I was like, I'm not a right fielder. He was like, well, Bobby Cox wanted you to play right field. I was like, oh, okay. So I'll go play right field. I go play, I go play right field. First ball go over my head. I'm like, mother lover. Uh, you know, I told you I'm not a right fielder. I, you know, I, I I don't like to make mistakes, to be honest with you. And I'm playing outfield. So the ball go over my head. I fired it in. I'm mad. He put me, he put me, he put me in, he put me back in center field. Got feel comfortable. Got, you know, happy back, next to bat, hit a homer. Hit a homer, you know, then, you know, game is over. I don't, I don't remember if we won the game or not. Go back to the hotel. In the morning, the trainer called me, say, pack your back, you're going up to the major league. And I was like, stop joking, guys. I mean, <laughs> this is this is kind of a joke right now. I thought everybody was joking with me because that whole year I went from A ball to double A AA to triple A. And now you guys going to tell me, pack your back again, you're going to go to the major league. So... I thought it was a joke, but I got, you know, I didn't tell anybody, you know, back in the day, I didn't have a phone to call nobody or, you know, page or page somebody. So <laughs> um, I got quiet on the bus, got on the bus, go to the, go to the um, stadium. The manager congrats me. Um, I packed my bag and I flew to Philadelphia to meet the Braves up, up in Philly to, to play the Philadelphia Fairies for, um, for my first game. Man, that's, 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 that's a tremendous story, man. All in one well, season though. Yeah, all, all that in one, one season. season, all in that and, one season, and, 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 and then the and World then, Series. Yeah, and then I didn't know I was gonna be on the roster because I was just a call up, and I just, you know, I got called up in in August, I guess. You know, then I didn't know September call up is the the guys that cannot make the playoff roster. August is the limit of guys that you know. If you get called up before August or in August, you can you can um be in the in the roster. But I didn't know that. Um, you know, we play in the playoff and, you know, Bobby say, hey, you're going to be on the roster. We're going to carry you on the roster um, as, you know, maybe defensive replacement or or maybe a right hander off the of the of the bench because um, we had a lot of right um, lefties on the, on the roster that year. And um, he wanted to mismatch some. So, um, you know, we get a chance to play. We play the Dodgers. We 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 got them and then we go play uh, St. Louis and. Um, I was just talking the other day with um, Jeff Blouser because um, him and my son play on this. Him and him, his son and my son play on the same team for school, and uh, we were just talking about that game. And um, you know, we were down three to one, and Eckersley was just you know being Eckersley, just talking a lot of trash and 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 telling he's going to shove it up our butt. Um, and we turned around and we we probably scored in. In three games, probably about thirty runs, I think, I believe. Wow. But um, you know, after that, everything kind of went went on the road, and you know, went to New York. First game got got um, you know, the first game got suspended because it was weather, and they pushed it back one day. And um, you know, after that, everything was history. After after that, now you won your first Gold Glove in nineteen ninety eight, and. Being honored in that kind of way amongst your peers uh, made you feel what inside? Well, I mean, the, the, the hard work, the dedication, and um, just going out there trying to be the best you can be. Um, be honest with you, all I wanted to do 
when I had the opportunity and this start with, with my dad, be honest with you, he say, hey, listen, you know, when they give you the opportunity, you got to take advantage of it because you never know when it will not, it will be get, taken away from you or you might not have never ha get the chance. So, um, you know, that's all I wanted to do. I wanted to be the best um, at my position and um, I work hard at it. Um, you know, it, it, it was not just, you know, why everybody see make me, see me playing, making all the, the diving catches, making great plays and throwing people out. Um, I work at it. I work at it every year when spring training start for a month and a half. Um, That's right. I, I do all, I do my own, my homework. I, I study my pitching stuff. I study my pitches that come from the bullpen. Um, you know, I, I, I study the hitters on the other team. Um, you know, I, 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 I visual what, 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 what they, what he, the guy is going to try to do at that moment or if he's going to pull the ball or not. So, I do my homework and that's why I wanted to be the best. And um, that's why I was, I was very consistent at, at what I did. Listen, you just said something that's very, very key to life, right? Um, in the mm -hmm. game of baseball, the game of football, the game of basketball, uh, in business, doesn't matter what entity that you're in. You said you visualize what's going to happen, right? Yeah. And that's one of the things that I think is huge in this world is that uh, a lot of people, we have to start visualizing things happening before they actually happen. Yep. And you said that was a part of your success. You visualized yes. what was going to happen before it actually happened. And then you went out there and it did happen. So I'm glad you said that. That's, that's great for the, for the young folks that's going to be watching this interview. Now, your best year as a pro came in 2005. You led the major league, uh, you made, led major league baseball at home runs with 51. You had 128 RBIs. You batted 263. You even made the all-star game. But, but, mm -hmm. Second in the ML, uh, NL MVP voting. How heartbreaking was that for you? Because I know, I know, I know you you want to win that that MVP, man. Well, I mean, MVP is when what what you do as a as a team. Be honest with you. I mean, you know how you carry the team, how you help the team get where they 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 um they end up. I, I think that year. Um, our Albert Pujols end up winning and a lot of respect to Albert Pujols. I mean, um, he's one of the greatest hitters in the game um, and consistent hitter in the game that we, that, that we play. Um, but he had a lot of, a lot of, a lot of good, good players on the team. I think that year I, I played, I played, I played the game. I mean, I played the whole season without Chipper. Chipper was hurt most of the year. That's and, right. Um, he was hurt that year. And and you know, we we had a lot of a lot of young guy. I think that's why that's that year when um Brian McCann came up, um um Jeff from Kuru came up. I mean, we had a, a young, young ball team and um um it, it it was tough, but those guys did did help me do what I had to do. And um and if it was not with them, um, you know, I wouldn't be impossible. But you know, I was happy that I ended up getting the Hank Aaron Award. And uh, I think that's more special than than the MVP for me. Um, it would have been great if I got the MVP too. But um, I think having, you know, getting the Hank Aaron Award uh, was more special. And I think at that point, me and Hank Aaron, um, we, we start talking a lot about baseball, about life and stuff like that. And, um, you know, I appreciate all that he did in for the game and mm -hmm. – um, for the the community and for the for the color of people and 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 everything. Now you you brought up Hank Aaron and um, I want to talk a little bit about, about about Hank Aaron and and he was an icon, right? He was a businessman. He was a role model. He was a guy that young guys, um, my skin tone, your skin tone, could look up to and had that visual of success and and to want to be something and be like somebody. Um, what was that relationship like with between you and Hank? Well, I'll be honest with you, you know, it, we never talk about the game. We talk about the game as um what you know what it means to us and what what mm -hmm. what we need to be doing. And I think everybody knows what what they be doing, they have to do when when they step on the field. But in general, it's more life talk. It's more about how's your family, um, what are you doing, you know, what 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 are you doing, you know off the field what what's going on with this and that um are you are you are you carrying yourself respectable are you are you you respecting the others um i think that's that's the most thing that 
me and him talk about, you know, through our time that we we, we speak. And that's um, big. And that's big and, because and, we, and, we and, need that. Yeah, because to be honest with you, you know, the game is is the game. We, we've we been playing it since we were little. And we're going to continue to learn it every every day that we get on the field. But the life part of it, the 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 of the field, the the, the family, the the you know the community, those are stuff that you know we talk about. And you know, I, be honest with you, and you know, it, it, when I hear it, it brought tears to my to, to my to my to my eyes because you know, for all those stuff that he went through and how humble he is and how mm. he how how he made all those things happen is is we I don't I don't I don't have a word for it to be honest with you because you know the hay la- the hay letters the 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 racism the 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 brutality everything I mean it, it was just tough to 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 think about how he did all those stuff going through all that and 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 being being you know the Hank Aaron that he he become the Mr. Mr. Hammer, um, you know, breaking records um, that others put out there. Um, it's just, yeah, I'll be honest with you, it, it, it gave me goosebumps because it's just, uh, you know, just I can't think about it. And I think the thing that I took as an office page, you know, it, you know, you're going to struggle and you don't have to show it up. You don't have to show it up. Just, just, you know, put your helmet down, walk back to your position, and then you get another chance the next day. See, I think that for me, that was the most impressive thing, right? Seeing everything that, like you just alluded to, that he was going through. But at the end of the day, he he knew how to just set it aside and still go out there and perform, right? Because yeah. if you if you looked at his play, you'd have been like, okay, Hank Aaron isn't going through anything. Yeah. But we always say you never know what somebody's going through on the inside. Yep. Yep. And he yep. had to deal, he had to deal with a lot. So I don't think there's a, a better human being to represent the city of Atlanta, to represent major league baseball, to yes. represent the African American community like Hank Aaron. So I'm glad you two guys had that relationship, not on a baseball level so much, but in general life. Well, Mental. be honest with you, be honest with you, nobody can be on, on Hank, Hank Aaron level of baseball. You know the numbers that he put out there is unbelievable. I mean, you yep. know, you look at other guys that that played the game for the longest time too. You know, but for what Hank Aaron did is, I don't think nobody can be on his level of of of, of consistency. Now, Andrew, you had a damn good career. You played seventeen years in the major leagues. Um, that's a long time now. I watched you a lot growing up um, here in the city of Atlanta. I can't wait to see number twenty five hanging up and being <laughs> retired at Truist Park. And I know you can't either, but you put the work in, man. You worked hard. You grind for everything that you that you have now. Uh, you grinded for everything that, 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 that you got back then. And I want to bring something else up, the Hall of Fame, right? Your numbers from a percentage standpoint are going up. So that means you're getting closer and closer to going to, going to, going to Cooperstown and getting into the Baseball Hall of Fame. Um, now, when it does happen, not if, but when it does happen, what would that mean to you? Well, I mean, to be honest with you, right now I can't think about it. I won't have a word, but I have to think about it. But um, you know, just you know, just get recognized of what kind of player you were um, through your major league baseball career. Um, will be we will humble to be honored into to to the major league um, Hall of Fame. Um, it's a, it's a tough it's a tough group to get in. Um, we all know that. Uh, we know how how politic it is. Um, but if it happened, I will be graceful, humble to be part of of a lead group. But if it don't happen, I still will be humble, elite. You know, on a, on a lead group because all my peers know what kind of player I was, my dedication I, I, I give to the team, and how uh, hard I work on my uh, on my uh, on my um, craft. So. If it happened, it happened. If it don't, you know, I'm not gonna be mad about it. Um, you know, I know, I know, it's a lot of people talking about it, and you know, why I should, be, you know, why I should be there or why I should not be there. But I'm not gonna, you know, put much mind on it because we can't control that. You know, just yeah. like we cannot control the world, we cannot control anything that's going on. You know, around around the world. So um, all we gotta do is leave it in the hand of 
the person that can control it or, you know, leave it in the hand of God and see what happened. Um, if it happened, like I said, I will be humble and grateful to be in there. Um, if it don't, I still be the same person that I am. Um, going back on the number 25, that will be an honor to be, you know, get that number retired because the recognition that the team will give you as what kind of player you were. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, those, like I said, those things, I, you know, I, I would love for them to happen. But um, when they happen, I will, I will appreciate every, everybody that, that helped me, that um, support me, and that guide me in the right way to be the person that, that, I, that I was. I mean, that one, I am. Oh. One thing that, that I love about you, and um, not only just doing this interview and, and, and seeing you and hearing you, but people that we know that we both know, they say the same things about you. You're relaxed, you're chilled, you're humbled. And that leads for me to believe that you were the ultimate teammate. You were, the, you were one of the best teammates that a person could actually have. Um, who was a guy that you was close to actually um, of your 17 years that you played in the major leagues? Well, to be honest with you, I, 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 was, I was that person that was neutral with everybody. I mean, I would mm. talk with everybody. I would never pick and I can, one and person. And I can tell that. that. I can, I can and, tell you know, that. I, 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 I never pick one person. I would talk with everybody. It, it, I, I want to make everybody happy. I want to make everybody comfortable. I want to make everybody, you know, laugh. I would joke. I will make, you know, it's just, I want, that, that's my personality. I just, I, I'm neutral with everybody. I don't, I don't pick a side. I don't, I don't discriminate. I don't, I, I want the best for everybody. So, you know, I think when 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 I want that, I feel like we can win. You know, I think I think if I push if I push you, um, if you're the great great player on our team, you know, just like Chipper, I can push Chipper. Chipper can push me. Um, you know, we can push each other. So that's how we 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 put our goal set of what we want to do every year when we go to spring training. Um, you know, the season can get long. People get frustrated with each other and this and that. But that's his part because that's how family is. You know, family disagree and agree at the same time. So, right. <laughs> um, you know, to play 162 games together or more because we always was in the playoff, um, you're gonna have disagree and 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 arguing against each other in in the clubhouse or sometimes on the field. But on the end of the day, we still family, and when the game is over it's over and we go back the next day and we go do what we need to do to, to help our team win. So, um, you know, I had good friends. I had really good friends. I got friends that I still talk with all the time, but, um, you know, as teammates, as a teammate, I was, I was neutral with every single, every single person, um, you know, not much with the relievers in the bullpen because they different creatures, but you know, <laughs> the guys that play every day and the guys that I'm around it all the time, those are the guys that I would just, you know, just neutral with all of them. I mean, it's trying to be their best friend or their friend that they need. If they need yeah. to come ask me something, I, I can tell, I can talk with them. So um, that's what I wanted to do. I just, I, I wanted to be a good teammate and, and help my team win. And I think that mentality that I had guide me in who I become as a, uh, as a great center fielder. Now you're still involved with the Braves organization. Um, you're a special assistant to GM Alex Anthopoulos, and you're still around players a lot as well. Ozzy Albies, right? You both, both of you guys are from Carousel. Um, you guys have a picture together when he was actually young. Um, what's, <laughs> what, what, what's your bond like with Ozzy? Well, I mean, uh, it's, it, it's just one of those things that, uh, when, you know, like I say, when I was, when I was coming through, you know, coming through my, my eight days in, in the major league, all these kids, I was hosting a bunch of, a bunch of baseball game back home for the kids to, to, um, you know, get the game going. And because back then, you know, on the Island, those kids only play like 30 games a year. Mm. And, you know, they basically practice or do whatever they need to do, but I want to make them play a little bit more games so they can be, be hands up of when they get chance to go to, let's say come to the Caribbean series or get a chance to go um, come here in, in the States and play the Little League World Series. Um, you know, I always made it fun for them because I told, I told them um, I did it for like 12 years. I did a league 12 years in, in January, mm-hmm. uh, right after the year and, ha- and put probably like 15, 20 teams together to play. And um, the team that went were, were to come to Atlanta and hang out for two days with me. And um, 
you know, all those kids will be like, <laughs> they will all will go all in to, to get the opportunity to come here and watch Major League Baseball player um, play the game and, and, and enjoy, enjoy Atlanta. So I did it for 12 years. Um, you know, after, after, I, after I stopped playing every day, um, I, pass it, I pass it to um, somebody else that's Kelly Jensen. Um, he play, he okay. plays for the, um, for the um, Los Angeles Dodgers. And um, I think he's still, he's still involved of it and he's still, he's still running it after I pass it to him. But I don't know if he's bringing the kids to, to the States to watch the game, but um, I did so it for 12 years. He's from Carousel too? Yeah, Kelly Jensen's from oh, I Carousel. Didn't, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Yeah. So that yes, leads me to my Carousel. next question. Um, do you have a relationship with a lot of other players in the major leagues that's from Carousel? I know you mentioned Jensen. I I, but... I, I see I see all of them when I go home. Um, I talk okay. with them, and if something goes wrong and I see it on TV, I will address it with them. I will text message, hey, what's going on? Uh, are you all right? Um, I feel you that you're doing this or that. And, you know, sometimes they call me and, and text message me and say, hey, Andrew. Um, take a look at my game. Uh, see what was going on. I, I can I can do that. I can do that. So um, we talk. I, I, I'm very involved with all of them. I mean, um, I'm I'm basically one of the idols that 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 made them want to play the you're game. The, you're and, the big, and, you're and, the big and, brother, man. You're the big brother. I, I, yeah, I'm the big brother <laughs> for them. So um, they they you know they 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 call me. They text message for 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 question and for Ozzy. You know, it's you know it's good for him because he's on. On the same organization that I am, and and we will get chance to talk a lot. Um, this year, I didn't get chance to go to spring training because of the whole Corona thing. Um, but you know, we still talk, and um, you know, I still watch the games uh, when they're on TV as spring training wise. But um, you know, when the game is on 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 regular season, I watch all the games. That's good. That's 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 dope, man. That's dope. It's it's nothing like having somebody that's older than you that 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 paved the way for you, really. You know what I mean? Yeah. To be in the situations that you're in, but you can, those guys can hit you up at any point and you give those guys great advice. Now, the last thing I wanted to discuss with you is your son. Um, yeah. Drew Jones is one of the top prospects in the class of 2022. Now he's committed to play at Vandy already, um, which is a top educational program and baseball program. A lot of, a lot of these top guys come from Vandy. Mm -hmm. How joyful is it for you to watch your son take the steps that you took? Well, I, I, I think I, I saw like a little different of his mindset probably like four years ago, you know, he, he kind of, he kind of put himself on a different level of, of, of a baseball player that he wanted to be. And um, be honest with you, he worked hard. Um, I see him, you know, he go, he go in and do his, his homework and what he wanted to do and he's working out and it's paying off right now. I'm very proud of him. Um, you know, he, he make his own decision. I don't. I don't make decision for him as what he want to do as a baseball player. Um, if he asks me a question, uh, I, I will have answer for him. Um, I will tell him what I see and um, what I don't see. So I just let him do do his own thing because you know it, 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 it's tough right now because it's such so much pressure on him to to be the player that everybody want him to be. And I just yeah. tell him just go out and have fun, man. Just just enjoy it. Don't, you know, this game is a game of failure. And um, if you fail, you know, you go back tomorrow. You guys play so many games. Who cares if you, if, if you go 0 for 10 for two games? You go the next game 2 for 3 or 4, four for 4, you're back, in the, back on, the, on, on, on top. So um, just go out there and have fun. Um, he especially got, he, he got tools. Um, he, he's a good defensive player. He's, he can play center field very well. And um, you, you got to go on, um, just, you know, just trying to get him consistent with the bat, just like everybody is. I mean, hitting is not that easy. Um, it's the one of the hardest, hardest things to do. But um, you know, I'm just trying to lead him in the right way and 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 let him have fun. And and if if that what what he want to do for his career, um, I would love to be part of it and and guide him in the right way. That's a great thing, man. It's nothing like you know. what I mean, your father, you and your father shared those moments. When you were growing up, now you get to do it with your son. I love that. I love the advice that you're gonna that you're giving them as well. Because um, when you when your father play a professional sport, right, and it has a lot of success, that pressure comes naturally, even yep. if you don't bring it. You know what I mean? So yep. I, I love your approach with your son, man, and I know he's thankful for you to be able to guide him. 
And Andrew, I want to thank you for joining the HD Connection. This meant a lot to me. I grew up watching you. Uh, those Braves teams, 96. I, I'm sorry y'all lost to the Yankees, but I was there at Fulton County Stadium cheering y'all yeah. on. So <laughs> Nice. What did you know? So thank you, man, for joining the show, and it meant a lot. Well, thank you for having me, man. I appreciate it. Anytime, just you know, let me know we, if you want to talk about anything. We can we get on and talk. Well, all right, listen, you and Chipper, when my son gets a certain age, I'm sending my son to you and Chipper. You and Chipper <laughs> got to right. teach my son how to play some baseball, right? Oh, all right. Y'all got me? I, listen, I, I, we, I we got record. You. you got me? I got you. There we go, baby. <laughs> appreciate right. it, my man. All right, man. Thank you.